Hello everyone, this is John Buck, uh, and I'm coming back with another discrete time linear systems video continuing our example on discrete time processing of continuous time signals. Uh, I'm going to uh, remember when we went through the sampling process, we started with a continuous time signal uh, that was a little rainbow shape, and we ended up in, in discrete time Fourier transform that looked like this. It, it went from minus 2 pi over 3 to plus 2 pi over 3 to 300. And now I'm going to say, what if when I look at the middle of the system, which would be this block here, when I look at the middle block, what if that was a low-pass filter with a cutoff of pi over 3? What would happen? Well, we know at each frequency, we know our, our filtering relationship in discrete time, right? That we just go through at each frequency, every, every big omega, and we say it's h at that omega times x at that omega. Well, what that means is that between minus pi over 3 and pi over 3, we multiply the rainbow by 1, and outside of that, I multiply it by 0. If I sort of overlay this copy, it says I'm multiplying by 1, and here and leaving it unchanged. Everywhere else, I'm multiplying it by 0. And so if I do that, I can sketch the result of doing that for my... Uh, my output, this would be y sub d. Putting a little subscript d on all these for today to remind us. This is the discrete time part in the middle of the system. So I'd end up with something that was like an arc, but then it gets cut off part of the way down, right? I don't finish the rainbow. I just get little arcs in the middle. Right, and this cutoff here is at the edge of the filter. Right, when I multiply by between minus pi over 3 and pi over 3, I multiply everything by 1, so it keeps that shape. I get the little arc shape here, and then it becomes 0 everywhere else, up until this edge, which would be a pi over 3 less than 2 pi. Well, 2 pi is 6 pi over 3, minus another pi over 3, is 5 pi over 3. That's where the edge is at. Right, and I have another copy down here at minus 2 pi. So this would be my discrete time output. So this is the discrete time filter. So if I went back to this thing, this is the Fourier transform of what's going on here. And now I've just got to do what was in the previous video, which was the reconstruction video. And so if I want to finish the story, I keep going. I say, well, the next step for reconstruction is I multiply all the frequencies by time, right? I, I, to get, um, I'm sorry, I divide by t. So I say, uh, big omega divided by t gives me continuous frequencies. So that was again, we we had 300 omega, and so each of these would be uh, 300 times this. So they would roll off. Oh, I should leave some room to label this. Right, so I have sort of an, an arc here that ends on either side. But when I multiply by 300, this is, uh, the 3's cancel out. I have 100 pi, which is 2 pi times 50. And on this side, I have minus 2 pi times 50. And I have this sort of rainbow arc, and the top of it is, is back to being 1. This was still at 300 from above. But then the reconstruction filter, remember, has a gain of t, so that 1 over 300 cancels this. And this is now 2 pi times uh, <clears throat> 1 over t, which is 300. And similarly, so this would be my yp. Oh, I'm lying. This is still a height of 300. So this is yp of j omega. This is the Fourier transform of the pulse train. And then the last step would be the reconstruction filter, like I showed in the last video. That's cutting off at 2 pi times 150, because that's my pi over t, which is pi times 300. So when I pull the 2 pi out front, I have 2 pi times 150 with a gain of t, which is 1 over 300. 
So those cancel it all out. And so if I draw the final continuous time output Fourier transform, I have just this middle copy left. Right, so I end up with a signal that's uh, edges at 2 pi times 50 and minus 2 pi times 50. So I started with the rainbow Right, if I sort of use blue to draw my original signal, it looked like this. And my discrete time system, by the time I go through all those steps that I sample, filter, and go back to continuous time, I end up with the white thing here. So it's it's been like a, it's an effective continuous time filter. And so let's say a little bit about that effective filter. Oh, wrong way. Right, if I look at this whole overall thing, for the equivalent filter, right? We say, well, I'm I'm trying to solve. Say, as long as there's no aliasing, this whole big box should act like a filter. That I've got some continuous time filter times the original filter. So let me solve for that. It says, well, H C of j omega would be y over x. And again, so this is the effective filter we would get if I pretended this whole box, again, assuming there's no aliasing, that acts like an LTI system with a frequency response J omega. Right, well, how do we, how do we break this down or, or think about what's going on? Well, first we said if there's no aliasing, the discrete time Fourier transform will be equal to scaling the height by t. And just the copy at 0 really matters. So I get big omega over t, right? And this is assuming there's, if there's no aliasing, right? Which is saying omega s is at least two times the highest frequency, the maximum frequency. And if this holds between minus pi and pi in discrete time, right? This is the, uh, I make the copies, but the copies don't overlap because there's no aliasing. So I end up with scaling the height and rescaling the frequency axis. So I can uh, uh, revise this the other way and say, well, if, if I solve, if I let this equal omega, then big omega, the discrete time frequency is little omega. No, I got that backwards. Sorry about that. The uh, continuous time frequency is the discrete time frequency over t seconds. And so on this side, it will be, and I can bring the, the t to the other side as well. I can rewrite this equation as t times the discrete time Fourier transform, where I put in uh, little omega times t. Right? I solve this for big omega. This is the j omega part. need to get this out of my way. But it's important to remember, still no aliasing. I'm going to put it over here in red so we don't forget. So if there's no aliasing, I can say that. So I'm going to bring this back up here. And the reconstruction filter has the same thing, right? We saw the reconstruction filter gave us yc is equal to t times yd e to the j omega t. Right, this new equation down here is good between, for little omega, between plus and minus pi by t. So I plug this into the denominator. I get t times xd of e to the j big omega t. I can then cancel out the t's. And we can show the effective continuous time filter is the discrete time Fourier transform at big omega t, at little omega times big t, divided by the input discrete time Fourier transform. Well, I say yd over h, this is just the discrete time filter evaluated with its frequency 
equal to omega t. Right, so the overall continuous time filter is determined by the discrete time filter with this change of variables for frequency, saying I replace the discrete time frequency by continuous time frequency times t, and that will tell me what it is. So that's a big deal. In fact, it's a big enough deal, I should write it again clearly at the bottom, just summarizing the main result of this, this development, is that when I do this sampling, filtering, and then reconstruction or interpolation, the overall system, has, if there's no aliasing, the overall system has a continuous time frequency response that's determined by the discrete time frequency response, h sub d of e to the j big omega, evaluated with a change of variables where we replace discrete time frequency by continuous time frequency times little omega. Okay, so what that says is, is coming back, it sort of fits with our earlier example that I had my discrete time filter, right, cut off at plus or minus pi over 3 in discrete time filter. Well, that becomes, we say that the new uh, effective filter would be cut off if this is, say, we'll call this omega naught for my cutoff, the continuous time cutoff would be that pi over 3 times 1 over t, which is uh, 300. So I have pi over 3, pi over 3 times 300. So that's 100 pi, or 2 pi times 50. So this says my effective continuous time filter is also a low pass filter but this cutoff I painted myself in a corner here but this cutoff in continuous time is at 50 hertz 2 pi times 50. okay so that's the well, now we've got through the whole system we've got the sampling the filtering and then more reconstruction to show the overall thing acts like a continuous time effective filter uh, and we've shown how to relate the continuous time filter to the hidden inside discrete time filter as long as there's no aliasing. All right, so this video is plenty long enough. I'll stop here, uh, and that's the whole story. So uh, that's the, the picture for processing continuous time signals in discrete time. All right, that's all for now. I'll see you next time.